Hey again, coders. I'm here to finish the backend integration of the Stripe API into your full stack web applications. We left off in the last video console logging the token of our card that Stripe takes care of for us. Again, it tokenizes the charge and we actually charge that token, not the person's credit card information because Stripe deals with that not our code, which again makes it awesome because they handle all that PCI compliance. All we got to do is play around with it until it works, just like we do in all of our development careers. You'll notice that this console log of token actually has a second property called token that has the ID on it. We could just as easily just write token.token.id, but that being a little bit cumbersome to remember, I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of ES60 structuring here to wrap my token. Um, variable in an object, therefore creating, bringing in the object token and storing it in the token object here. So if we console logged it now, instead of having to do token.token.id, we can get away with token.id. Just a quick little refactor to make our code a bit easier to handle. We're also going to need an amount of some kind, which we'll be getting from our input that happens to handle amount of this dot state dot amount. That way we can send these two guys using some ES6 syntax. And we're going to have to be doing some kind of promise fetch request. And that fetch request will be to an API route we have not quite coded yet, but we're going to be doing it to slash API slash donate. It's going to take some configuration options, such as the method, which will be a post request because we're posting a request body and we do that on our post method. We're going to have to have a headers object here. And that headers object, just like we did before in our mailgun.js video, will have a content type of application JSON. We're telling our server that, hey, we're making a JSON type body request with this post. And our body will have to stringify because we can't just send a basic JavaScript object. We have to stringify this to make it into JSON. We'll be sending an JSON object that has our token and our amount. And this is just using a little bit more of ES6 syntax. If you don't recall at this point in the curriculum that you can do token colon token and amount colon amount. And I made it these variable names as such so I can use some ES6 syntax at the property and the value have the same name, you can shorthand it. So token colon token goes down to token and so does amount. And then after this, if we had a full stack app to demo in this application, we could do a redirect, we could do clear inputs, we can have a thank you alert. This is where you do your logic to have any of that kind of stuff happen if you're going for a more smooth user experience. For the sake of brevity in this video, I'm gonna leave a message and comment of how to do that right there and where to do it, but we're not actually gonna be utilizing that in this video. Cool. So with our form now pretty much done, all we have to do is head to our back end. I'm gonna collapse this client folder and head to my server folder. And before we actually get to coding anything, I have it conveniently highlighted already, but don't forget to have this express.json middleware in order to parse JSON request bodies. If you forget this, you will spend an embarrassingly large amount of time trying to find out why your request body is coming back undefined, only to realize you forgot to use this piece of middleware. It happens to the best of us, it happens to folks that have been coding for a few months, and it happens to folks that have been coding for a few years. This guy. Um, <laughs> so our routes is where the magic's going to happen. We are going to have to code a route that will do this charge for us. I'm going to do that first. I'm going to have my post routes to API slash donate, just like we had coded on the front end. We had our requ request, our response, and our next. And this is where our logic is going to be happening. Now it's going to be asynchronous. So as usual, my little syntax setup here, we're going to console.log the error if it happens, and we're going to send a status of 500, which typically include, which typically means some kind of server error has gone on. It's going to be asynchronous in nature. It fulfills a promise. We have to connect to the Stripe API, do some work, and it sends a response to us. So it's asynchronous in nature. And then we're going to have to code out our actual charge, which we can do in line with Stripe, or we can make a helper function that does that for us that we can then move into a different file or reuse across our application. We're going to need to do a few things to set up first. If you remember in the last video, which again, if at this point you're confused of where you are, please watch the first video, which will be a tad bit longer since the front end integration takes a little bit more work. 
along with some JSX styling and some bootstrap, bootstrap tricks that you might like after watching that video. But we did install the typings for at type slash stripe, and we also installed the stripe node module. Those are going to be at least the bare minimums you need to get up and running here. So first things first, we have to import our stripe loader. I believe this is a default export from Stripe, so you can call this whatever you want. We're going to call it Stripe just to keep, keep it simple and easy. And remember, we have to do our asterisk as Stripe loader for TypeScript happiness. It should still be running with no errors. After that, we can do this wherever we want in our application. I'm just going to go ahead and put it nearby our function that we create in our router.post just so it, to show you it doesn't really matter where you declare these things like I used to think. It just matters that you do it correctly and before you actually need it. So we're going to have to instantiate whatever our configured stripe does into the variable stripe. So const stripe is a new instance of stripe loader. And stripe loader can take some configuration. At bare minimum, it needs an API key string pasted into it. And we can actually snag this from our dashboard here where we can get our secret key, which I will have to be rerolling before I get trolled from this video. So I'll be um, copying and pasting the secret key into this string for now. Now, I've said this before in most of my videos, but I'm going to reiterate it again since we've done it here. Do not push this key to GitHub. These folks have web crawlers that look for their algorithm keys in GitHub commits, and if they find them, they will ban your key until you fix it. So save yourself some headache and some trouble by using environment variables or configuration files for production and development to avoid hard coding this key in here. You're going to want to have something like process.env.stripe.skkey or something like that and use, uh, utilizing Heroku's backend .env configuration. Again, I'm repeating myself, I know, but I'm stressing it's very important that you do not hard code this and push it to GitHub. Otherwise, you'll call you, cause yourself a lot of trouble. With that little caveat and caution out of the way, let's go ahead and continue. Um, if you've done this correctly, this should actually properly configure your stripe. That way we can now code our charge function. So we're going to be having a function called charge, which will take a token, which will be a string value. And it's also going to take some kind of amount, which will be probably a number of some kind. And then with those arguments out of the way and done in TypeScript, you can create an interface for this if you want. I'm just being lazy and inlining it since we only have two things that are going to be done here and there, just, just here and nowhere else. So that's all that matters. So it's going to be returning stripe.charges.create. And I got this again from the Stripe documentation. It's very well written, so I'm taking full advantage of their examples to help you guys code this in no time. So dot create is a method that takes a configuration object as its sole argument and it takes an amount property which if you didn't see earlier when i flashed by we have a tab conveniently opened up to show that all api requests expect amounts to be provided in a currency's smallest unit so if i want to charge 10 us dollars i have to charge a thousand cents so if we want to convert from dollar dollar bills over to cents we have to multiply everything just by 100. so our amount in this particular charge will be whatever our amount pass in is, AMT times 100, or 100. Then we're going to have to specify what type of currency it is, which is a string, and we can get USD as the currency type, which again can be found in the parameters of the create method in their documentation. We have to provide some kind of source, which will be our token ID which we're assuming we'll be passing in as the argument token and a brief description at very least of what this is. So statement description, we can call it whatever we want at the time. Now, like I had mentioned in the first video, there is a crap ton of metadata you can throw in here if you so choose. I'm just showing you the bare minimum of what you need to get up and running in no time. Okay. Cool. So moving forward now, we go and I believe we have everything we need for our charge function ready to go at minimum. So now we can integrate it into this post route. And again, like I had said earlier, if you want to move this particular stuff and the import into another file so you can keep this code a bit cleaner, by all means, please choose to do so. 
So we're going to say we're going to get some kind of data. And we're going to await the charge function to return and resolve its promise. And we're going to be passing in our rec.body.token.id, if I'm not mistaken. And we're also going to be passing in our request.body.amount. Those should be the values, and we can always just console log our request body if we're not entirely sure. And for this demo, I'm going to console.log the data response, whatever it happens to be, and I'll just send a basic little response that says charged. And our console.log data will be our confirmation that this sucker actually worked. <coughs> Excuse me. So. With that done, we should be ready to go and test this guy out. So let's give it a shot and give it a whirl. I'm going to refresh this one final time. Luke Skywalker would like to donate $100 to this application. Thank you, buddy. Our 424242, etc. test card. Charge it. No error in our tab here, which is always solid. You can always check your network tab if you're concerned. Checking our terminal here and we have a successful charge. It has an ID, it has the amount in cents, no errors, payment complete, it's authorized, we got it. Name Luke Skywalker, we got their correct response, which you can do with this, whatever you want, log it, and all this stuff is also available on the back end for their dashboard. So I head over to payments here, you'll notice that I have a successful payment from Luke Skywalker, on February, February, January 14th at 11.32 p.m. Looking good and ready to go. And the backend integration, fairly simple. There's really not a whole lot you have to do. The main thing to keep in mind is always check out their documentation and look at their examples. A lot of the times they have very simple things that you can integrate as a test and then carry forward and customize as you so see fit. Um, a lot of these things, especially when it comes to React and TypeScript, are all very new, meaning they can change within a few months. They might have pushed new code to their GitHubs in the last few days, if not maybe even hours. So the general idea here is less about the nitty gritty code to get this up and running in your applications, but more so the workflow. Um, in this instance, Stripe handles all the credit card information. It never touches your code. So including this script allows us to integrate that API to make sure they handle the credit card, not our code. Then remember, a user could come to some kind of form on the web page and utilizing their very convenient React Stripe Elements module, we can create a injected form that receives these props that makes sure it can use a card element in order to show the credit card number, expiration date, CVC, security code, all that stuff, and take that information and keep it away from our code. This entire little input is handled by their API, not my server code. So they handle this and we can send all this information and tokenize it. And when it's tokenized, we can send that value, the token, to our own endpoint. And our endpoint happens to be that donation endpoint, or it could be a subscription endpoint, or an Apple Pay endpoint, or whatever you want it to do. And then from there, we actually charge the card using, again, the Stripe backend library now. So our Stripe node library has a dot charges dot create, where we create a new charge with an amount and that token. And that token represents the card that the user entered on the front end. So we charge that card, and if it successfully works, we have it available as a payment on our back end and a positive confirmation message in our console.log. That's the workflow of the Stripe API and the best bet you have is essentially trying to finagle this to work. Follow along with the video, code it into your templates and utilize their API to customize it even further and achieve what you want to get done using the Stripe third-party API. With that all being said and done, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below or in the questions discussion in Gravity. Other than that, happy hacking, have a good time, and 